What's up, beautiful people? You're welcome back to Bomb of Bespoke. So we are continuing on our journey of creating the patterns for men's leather loafers. This is the last that we started out with. And in the last class, we cut out our last copies, created a mean form. So this is the medial side and lateral side of our last copies. And then, of course, we created a mean form, which we indicated is what we're going to use to create the rest of the pattern. So the designing of the various pattern pieces from this mean form is what we are about in this very class. And the first thing to be done is to go ahead and trace out that mean form on a clear piece of paper on which we are going to be doing the rest of our designs. If you notice, I've marked in all of the cardinal points that we found when we did um, the things we did in creating the mean form. First thing, we draw our vamp line from the vamp point to the ball and then divide it into two. Then we will draw our quarter line by connecting that middle point to our counterpoint. So this is our quarter line. Then we divide that quarter line into two. Divide your quarter line into two and leave that mark alone. First of all, straighten out your center lines from the van point towards the instep. You draw a straight line and from the van point towards the tip another straight line so those are done just connect the tip like that now if i was making an oxford or a derby i probably would have you know started drawing a rectangle from the instep but since this is a loafers i marked a point about one and a half cm beneath the instep and drew a rectangle from there let's refresh our memory about certain things concerning this um, mean form Last length is 35, divide that by 4 gives us 8.7 cm, divide that by 5, 7 cm, divide by 8, 4.3 cm. We'll use this um, division by 8, which is 4.3, and then we mark 4.3 on the right angle that we drew from that point 1.5 cm beneath the instep. We mark another point about half a centimeter beneath the middle of the vamp line and draw a line to connect to the point we marked earlier. This will form the tongue of the loafers. Then if we draw a line from the back height to the same point where our quarter line terminates, our top line is done. So we draw in this curve at the tongue of the loafers like so. And basically our basic loafers is done. Next thing, since it's a capital loafers, we will mark one fourth, one fourth of the last length, which is 8.7, and draw a right angle from there. Because curves always look better than straight lines, I want to make this cap to a curve. So I draw a point about um, 3 mm um, in front of the straight line that I drew. Then I'll mark one eighth of the last length on that first right angle that we drew. And then if you draw in a line to meet that point like so, this will give you an angle that we can curve to make that straight line a curve. See that? So this is my own way of drawing the curve of captos. There is another formula for doing that, but I've mastered it really in all honesty. And this way always works for me. So as you see, um, the capto and every other thing is done. Uh, one thing I haven't added is the bow, which I just added off camera. I'm going to leave that as your assignment. So you add your own bow, but whatever you do, see that um, it covers that angle that the top line and the tongue of the loafers make. That's all that you need to do. Let's take a break here and get ourselves something to eat. Some asun and coffee will do. While I'm at that, I would like to make an appeal to you guys. Um, it takes quite a lot to put out some of these classes for you guys and this is the point where I would like to say that I need your help. Believe it or not, there are also courses and classes that I myself need to um, register for and attend. And I've placed my site on one of them which is about 13,000 euros. So I'm asking for your help. You can use the link in the description to make a donation of any amount. Or if you know how I can get a scholarship for a bespoke shoemaking course, I'll be grateful. 
right so let us get to part two of what we set out to do in this class which is spring avamp now if you take a look at this main form that we have our design i'm um, already drawn on you'd see that from the van point to the tip is on a straight line and then from the van point towards the instep is also on a straight line which means that any um, pattern pieces that fall exclusively behind those straight lines are easy to duplicate straight lines are easy to be duplicated of course but when you have the ones that transcend uh that van point so you have a pattern piece that falls between those two lines you'd have to straighten out these two lines before you are able to duplicate them and that is the subject of what we are doing but first of all let's do the easy ones the capital lies on a straight line so if we basically place it on a folded piece of paper we can punch in its lines and we are able to you know draw in that curve and our capital would have been duplicated so um of course we won't forget to add our lasting allowance the lasting allowance is the void distance between your feather edge um the extra space you add after your feather edge what i typically like to do is to add two cm for each new pattern each um first time that i'm creating a pattern at two cm then once um i satisfy myself that the pattern works out i can reduce to 1.5 or 1.3 as the case may be so as you can see the cap to or toe cap whatever is looking very good so let's get to the part that is a little bit more difficult the parts that fall between the two straight lines so look at this rest of the pattern of this loafers i have several uh, methods of springing and if you guys if for those of you who have been following my channel for a long time there's a type where i cut along the vamp line and you know just straighten things out but this is a much more i want to show you um the logic involved in it so if you place this like so and mark that point the entire distance from here to the tip is equal to the summation of the distance between there from there to the van point seven and then from the van point to the tip 13 20. so this as long as they are on the straight line no matter how you rotate them on the straight line, as long as you pivot from the middle, your distances remain consistent. It's not so, however, with the curve and the curve beneath around the feather edge. Now, let me demonstrate that to you. If we draw a right angle from that van point to this point, to that point, and draw in this curve like so, Now, if we take a measurement of the heel, from the heel to the point where that right angle terminates on the feather edge, take a note of the distance we got. It was 22.5, right? So from the heel to that point is 22.5. So let's place it back on that straight line, mark out this point. If we rotate from that point downwards and maybe you know punch in the rest of the pattern and then draw in our feather edge up to that line that line that we drew earlier on you know draw it in up to that point now let's take a measurement of it if you take a measurement of it now you find that at that curve area we have fallen short of about 2 cm so we now have 20.5 whereas what we had earlier was 22.5 so where did our 2 cm go which is why we need to do this spring game. so if we mark this point and rotate it here and rather than stop at the initial point where we stopped we still just take it all the way up to where that right angle was we would have gained back our uh, 2 cm 
and of course you know that it's on the feather edge and our rule um, for dealing with the feather edge is that you take the longer of the two lines so there's a shorter line here and a longer line here so we take the longer of the two right so if we measure from here to there you see that we have our complete 22.5 cm that is the same principle that we're going to be deploying in springing the rest of the um back side of this pattern so we mark in this point here where the capital terminates i'm marking that point where it terminates at the feather edge you know so then draw in that feather edge that way so when we get to that point we mark in that point then using our van point as pivot we pivot to we have the backside on the straight line. Then we will use our all to punch in the rest of the pattern. Punch in the top line. And then draw the back area. Then we will draw our feather edge. Remember we say rather than stop here, which will fall short by 2cm, we will take it all the way, in fact, to the place where the to the place where the thing started out immediately. So we take the longer of the two lines, like we said, being feather edge. Our rule for feather edge is that we take the longer of the two lines. So note two things that we have here. Our capital started from this point and ended at that point. So once we place it there, we can simply draw in the curve. Add a stitching allowance in front of it. And then basically add our lasting allowances. So that way we have been able to duplicate this pattern without much ado. Now, the way that I like to um, do my loafers is particularly this type of loafers that is a little bit more formal i like to add a folding allowance at the top line so i'm going to mark in a folding allowance at the top right there and then you know but when we were creating our mean form because of these notches that we cut we actually elongated the heel part a little bit so we're going to um, take care of that and you know um curve it in a bit you know just so that we can eliminate some of that excess material that we created when we added the notch notches on the mean form then we cut out the rest of the parts that we don't need and ladies and gentlemen if we add our tracing channels at the top right there and our tracing channels at the stitching allowance area right here the entire pattern is now complete now <clears throat> i know some of you are going to come after me in the comments and say yeah you broke the logic that you um referred to when you were explaining the logic no i didn't i didn't if you watch it carefully you'd find out that i didn't so um some of your complaints are going to be that i did not at the time i sprung to this point that I did not extend this line to this place. There was no reason for me to do that because the point is what I need you to understand is that I want this whole part all the way from here up to here to correspond at least up to this part to correspond very well so that this place slots into whatever that I have here um, seamlessly without any problems. So which is why my springing started from here.
So if you notice, I did a right angle. I have a right angle that I drew from here up to here. So this is a right angle. So the first time we sprung, we did something like this. We marked out this point. Oh, sorry, let's put that exactly. We marked out this point and marked out that point, right? Then we drew and stopped here. Then we pivoted from here. Down, down until we were, you know, on a straight line here. So what I did, so rather than extend, so what I did was rather than stop here, I did all the way way to the new point where this starts so i gained my 2cm back right so i didn't stop here i stopped here if i was pivoting from here then there would have been a need for me to stop there but i wasn't pivoting from here i was pivoting from here so um my rule is intact i just thought to explain that so that um you, you guys don't come in the comments and you know come after me so um i intended for this video not to be very long but it looks like it is chasing the 15 minute mark again so get your own pattern to this point and like always god bless you see you in the next class